Uh, hi everyone and welcome back uh, to this series of electrical A6 power systems and machine questions. Uh, this is a question about uh, synchronous uh, generator and it was, uh, the ex it was in the exam of uh, December 2021. 20, uh, okay, so let's see this uh, question. So as you can see here, it is, uh, we are given the power factor and <laughs> We are giving X is as a pair unit. So we are not giving the uh, synchronous reactance as in ohms, but as basically as in pair uh, unit. And this is here, the approach will be a little bit different as we will uh, see. And it says here the generator works at the rated conditions. So here the rated conditions will be assumed is one pair unit. So the rated conditions, Rated conditions, it means that the current, for example, this means that your I will equal to one pair per unit, or S is equal to one pair per unit. So that is what is meant by uh, uh, rated conditions. Okay, so we want to find P, Q, the internal general voltage, and the torque angle. So basically, this is the model that we will be using here. So we'll have here the internal EF, we have here XS, and we have here VT. So what do we know about uh, this configuration? We know that VT is equal to one angle of zero. This is always we assume uh, this is the uh, rated uh, voltage. Now the current will be I, okay? And uh, this is the power factor 0.8. Uh, it's not stated if it's leading or lagging. I assume it's lagging, so it is uh, with minus theta. Okay, so we want to find P. So P is equal to V I cosine theta. Okay, now here there is no root three, although this is basically a three phase system because we work in per unit, we don't use the root three, so as if like it's a single phase. So the voltage is one. This is the output power, so the voltage is 1, which is this one, times the current is also 1, times the power factor, which is 0.8. So the power is equal to 0.8 per unit. Q is equal to Vi sine theta. Now, theta is cosine inverse of 0.8, which is 36.9. So your Q is equal to 1 times 1 sine of 36.9, and this will give me 0.6 per unit. Then we want to find EA or EF and delta. So we apply just KVL here. This is very straightforward. So your EF is equal to 1 angle of 0 plus the current, which is 1, angle of minus 36.9 times the impedance, which is 0.7, and this is a reactor, so it's a G. So this is equal to 1 angle of 0 plus 1 angle of minus 36.9 times 0.7 angle of plus 90 then this will give me a voltage equal to 1.53 angle of 21.52. So this is your EF and this is your, your delta. So we found everything at this rated conditions. So now we move to part B. Now in part B it says here, if the steam valve so let's just, just again go back to the model that we are using. This is your AF. This is the one angle of zero, and this is your JXS. Now, if the steam valve is open such that P increased 20%, so the output power, you are increasing the flow of steam so that the output power will increase accordingly. So we want to find P, Q, E, F, and delta at this condition. So it means here that your P now is equal to, or called P nu, equal to 1.2 times P old. So I'm, this is direct, I can find it, which is 1.2 times the 0.8 will give me 
one sorry 0 0.96 per unit so this is your basically your uh, your power then this 0.96 will equal to the current one the v1 times the power factor new that we don't know from this the power factor new is equal to 0.96 and hence your theta new will equal to 16.3 cosine inverse of this so from this your q will equal to 1 times 1 sine 16.3 and this will give me 0.28 so this is your sine theta so now once we know that this is the p and q now we need to find ef so ef in u is equal to one angle of zero so always we assume here that the generator is connected to a basically an infinite bus so one equal angle zero this is always the the case plus the uh, uh, the current one angle of minus sixteen point three times j point seven because this doesn't change again so when you multiply this you get this is one point three seven angle of twenty nine point one eight so this is your ef magnitude and this is your delta let's go to the third part if the system is restored to the initial conditions so we go back to this initial conditions okay so if the system is restored to that specific condition and then basically here the uh, the exciter adjusted the exciter is basically your ef uh, this is the one that the field okay so basically you are increasing the field current and once you increase the field current because ef is proportional to if in the re linear region okay so we assume that we are in the linear region so if you have, if i want to draw here your if and your ef you get a curve like this okay so this is like a sort of a linear region here so an increase by 20% in if will lead to an increase by 20% to ef so ef i would say 3 is equal to now 1 Point two e f one, which is the original conditions. This is just the magnitude. So this is equal to one point two, and if you go back here, the, this one is equal to one point five three at a. So times one point five three, and this will give me one point eight three six. Now this is just the magnitude of e f, not the angle of e f. Here, there is the trick here. Now. When we adjust the exciter or we increase the field current, we are not affecting the real power. The real power stays the same. Okay? And when that we when we are using this model of the generator, this is your EF, this is XS, this is your VT. Now, this model of the generator, we are ignoring RA. So when you ignore RA in the peer unit, the P out is equal to the EF times the vt divided by x is sine the delta this is the power now this power stays as it is doesn't change so ef1 vt it's the same x is the same delta 1 equal to ef3 vt sine delta 3 divided by x s so this will be cancelled okay so we will have here ef1 Basically, it is 1.53 sine delta 1, which we calculated at part A, which is 21.52, is equal to EF3, which okay, just calculate 1.836 sine delta 3. So from this, you can find that your delta 3 is equal to 17. 0.8 degrees so this is your delta 3 so we found ef3 and we find delta 3 what is left is basically your r uh, your uh, p and q now the i has changed now when i change this 
uh, IF will change EF and I will change accordingly because the VT we assume it is constant. Now your I, again, remind ourselves, this is the model here. This is your EF, this is your VT, and this is your XS, and here is your IA. So your IA is equal to EF, and here is 3, because in the third condition, minus VT divided by JXS. So this is equal to 1.836 angle of 17.8 minus 1 angle of 0 divided by J.0. 0.7 and if you do the calculations with this you want to find the current equal to 1.34 angle of minus 53.25 if you try and you can do that if you try to find p out at this condition which is 1 times 1.34 times cosine of 0 minus minus 53.25 you will find this is equal to 0.8 per unit which is the power at the first condition and this is what we said that the power doesn't did not or will not change so then what is left we want to find the q which is vi sine theta so it's equal to basically 1 1.34 sine of the cosine of this uh, uh, 0 minus minus 53.25 and this will give me a total reactive power equal to 1.07 per unit. You notice here that the reactive power has increased. It started here as 0.6. Why the reactive power increased? Because we are increasing the field current. We are increasing the flux and the reactive power itself is nothing or consumed in the form of a flux. So when we consume more and more flux, we are basically producing more and more reactive power. So I found this is really a very interesting question about synchronous machines.